Hello, my incisive friends, and welcome back to Alien Protocols. I wanted to share some thoughts with you guys and see what you thought. Um, it basically revolves around how life throughout the universe most likely evolves. But before we can get into how life actually does it, let's look at how the habitat of these life forms evolve. You know, solar systems are created when there's a bunch of gas and particulate matter in an area that becomes so high it congeals. Gravity brings it all together more and more and more and they start to clump and it clumps more and more and more until little small moons and asteroids and planetoids are created and they merge because of gravity and merge more and more and more and big planets are created and they keep merging more and more and more until they become a sun. Until there's a sun. Let's write that right there. So. <laughs> and outside of the sun, there are planets. Which happen to find nice, stable orbits for a wide variety of different reasons. And there's this hot stage in a solar system. You know, when the sun lights up, that's the first major warming element. And early on in a solar system, all the planets are warm. Most of them are, are warm on some level. And we know because of uh, astronomical spectrometry that there's so much iron and water throughout the universe. And these heavy metals sink to the center of these planets. And these heavy metals rotate in the internal convection of the core of these planets. And when you have metal convecting like that, it creates a, a field, an electromagnetic field. Let's just say it looks like that on this one. And this electromagnetic field does something spectacular. It protects the planet from the most dangerous solar and extrasolar radiation, cosmic rays, and the other deadly DNA-destroying uh, sources of radiation. So these magnetospheres stay for a long period of time. And as they, the planet cools and the rotation of the core of these planets reduces, the magnetospheres flux, they flip back and forth, and then finally stop. Now we know water is universal in great amounts. So these planets will have H2O, H2O on them, a lot of them, especially if they're able to retain a magnetosphere. But what happens in the evolution of planets, and this is more my theory, is that there is a system, there's an order of how it works. You would think the furthest planets would lose their magnetosphere first, but they, and they do to a large degree, but there's different orders and speed at which the other planets can lose their magnetosphere. We're pretty certain that Venus had a magnetosphere and Mars had a magnetosphere, but as time passed, Venus lost, lost it. We know Mars had a tremendous amount of water on the surface, but once they lost the magnetosphere, the oceans evaporated. And that's essentially my kind of theory of planetary evolution, how the planets evolve over time. Now, there is a theory about life 
that's called the rare earth hypothesis, which says life is on earth because of such incredibly rare conditions that brought intelligent creatures to life, like us, only because of the most rare and bizarre chance. And I think this rare earth hypothesis is really a poor hypothesis because it makes several speculations. One, that this life evolves from microbial to intelligence all at one location, which I believe doesn't have to be the case. Now, we know from our solar system and wonderful places like uh, Enceladus, which is a moon of Saturn. Enceladus is an ice planet with a deep ocean in it. There are several of these moons in our galaxy. But some pictures that were taken less than a decade ago show these huge cracks on the surface of Enceladus and water spraying out hundreds of miles, thousands of miles into space. Now imagine if a microbial life over millions of years at Enceladus with the energy that is created by plate tectonics, which is gravitationally caused by interaction with Saturn and other heavy gravitational forces, the surface cracks and the life that could have evolved there even if just microbial, could come out into space in those sprays. And that's why my prediction that we will find lots of life just floating in space, from microbial to even larger, more complex. But the process that happens here could start a life form, and they could, a life form could grow to intelligence over time by utilizing different locations in the solar system to achieve all those rare factors that the rare earth theory tries to, I guess, convince us that we're unique. I believe the universe is suspiciously constructed for life. Life forms need energy and habitat in the most basic way, and our universe is basically just that, energy and habitat. Suns, the energy, and habitat, planets. And these solar systems are spaced apart in a large enough way so that something can grow to a high advancement level within a solar system and not be influenced or damaged or killed by another solar system's life forms. So I think there's something called, I'll just call it multi-planetary planetary biosynthesis, which would mean a life form starts in one location and through a wide variety of possibilities, does panspermia to another location where it can advance even further and it keeps continuing to move and spread. Life does that. All life that we know of here on Earth tries to spread itself out and explore. Even something that's perceived as stationary, like a tree. Trees invent all sorts of incredible ways to spread the seeds farther and farther, which over time gives the tree a greater chance of perpetuating. So it's not abnormal for things to travel off of a planet even. Just like the seed that is inside of a fruit that the tree has created ingeniously in order to spread its seed because some animal eats it and poops it out somewhere else. So life could have started, let's say, on Venus. They have found phosphine 
and the upper atmosphere of Venus, which is usually found, most often found, in the decay of organic molecules and organics. It could be a very strong hint that there was very rudimentary life in Venus's atmosphere. And let's say either a comet or something else, or an asteroid blasted some of this rudimentary life into space. It got caught by Mars gravity and brought to the planet. Now Mars at the time would have had a huge ocean and a great magnetosphere. And on Mars could have evolved over millions and billions of years to a very high stage of advancement. Or even to a medium stage of advancement and then panspermy it again through, through either an asteroid or meteor strike or other possibilities and made it to Earth. And we are actually the descendants of microbes from Mars and Venus. I think we're going to find a lot of this kind of moving around of life forms is very logical. Life forms get more advanced each hopscotch. And now here on Earth, we have a space program. We could be doing that advancement to the next level of our evolution right now. And instead of chance allowing us to leave our planet, like happens with uh, the the giant water sprays on Enceladus or an impact on Mars that would have created the panspermia. We now, as more intelligent beings, can panspermia ourselves. And our life form will advance further, will evolve further just by the very rudimentary nature of life forms. Changing habitats and evolving. So it's very fascinating to think about the notion that us leaving Earth is necessitative as an evolving intelligent species and will lead to our new evolution. A change of physical form, an increase in all the abilities. So this multi-planetary biosynthesis theory seems of course, to provide other options for a rare earth, making the rare earth theory not that rare, especially considering our universe is filled with water and habitat and energy. This is really fascinating stuff, in my opinion. So, these primordial life forms grow and evolve to their maximum state likely in that zone before they are panspermied. You know, life <clears throat> seeks, explores, and exploits chance. And I think that's what has happened to our species. You know, statistically, I think this is the most probable of life origins. And the origins of hyper-intelligent species, more intelligent than us. Now, of course, some planets and conditions of safety for billions of years may allow a species to advance to the most intelligent levels all in one location. But I think that would be less likely than a more dynamic interplay of life between uh, planetary conditions, which to me is endlessly fascinating. It also made me think of a slightly separate but related notion. You know, modern humans have been around for some say 300,000 years. And the surface of the planet goes through tremendous changes. There was an ice age, you know, 13,000 years ago. 
And we basically, modern humans, have thought we've been around only for 13,000 years, that we were more animal-like before that 13,000 years. But there could have been very advanced civilizations on Earth in this 300,000 year period. Or more. Even back to the dinosaurs, conceivably. It's so hard to get evidence of past life because the surface of the Earth in plate tectonics rolls. You know, when two plates come together, they can either go subduction or the other one, abduction. <laughs> and so everything is crushed down into the, lo the molten matter under the surface of the Earth, and it comes back in other places. So if there was an ancient civilization somewhere here on Earth, or a very advanced group of humans or other animals in our past, very intelligent, hyper-intelligent, and they even had a civilization, it could be completely hidden because the evidence is destroyed in this planetary, plate tectonic, geological change that happens. So if you were wanting a species to survive through these kind of dynamic changes, or you wanted to look for a species that lived way before us that was intelligent, there are ways to look for it. Here on Earth, we could find advanced intelligences here on Earth, or at least evidence thereof. Now, of course, we could find it in something that would last longer <clears throat> than mountains or buildings. <clears throat> Nothing from our modern society will... The biggest buildings, the pyramids, everything <clears throat> will be folded in time underneath the surface. But there are rare exceptions where life and the plates of the planet <clears throat> push upwards instead of go downwards. And these create mountains and all sorts of things. And there could be evidence of an advanced intelligence in, in the top portion of some of these mountains. Or in other places, we might find something like a microplastic or micro constructions or something that could survive the melting underneath the surface and still come back. Perhaps specially cut diamonds of an incredibly small size that could survive. Micro materials of other kinds. You know, there might the one thing that would last <clears throat> longer, I think, <clears throat> than any physical objects would be a DNA. Because life is diversifying. I think life forms DNA might be longer lasting than any single hunk of matter that's non-diversifying that would ultimately be destroyed by plate tectonics. Because of its flexibility and dynamism, DNA could be a way to leave a message for the future if you were an intelligent civilization. I don't know, I thought that was an interesting thought. Different ways, there's other ways to search for a previous advanced intelligence here on Earth. Can you guys think of any? What do you think about the idea of <clears throat> planetary biosynthesis? This kind of evolutionary matriculation of life from basic to more advanced. I think we're at one of those stages right now. Now that we have space flight, we're on the edge of a new literal evolution of our species. This is what happens with all life as it spreads and seeks to exploit positive chance.
I know this was a long video and I repeated a lot of things I'm sure you guys knew already. I hope I didn't sound too redundant. But I would love to hear your thoughts about this stuff. This is all related to UAPs, UFOs, unknown technologies here on Earth. And how life could be seen across the universe. <clears throat> One last little point. Our universal laws and rules show that the universe likes to put things in systems. And systems have <clears throat> certain stages that they have to reach. And life forms... on Earth and across the universe would have a lot of the same features. You know, on Earth alone, flight, the ability to fly has evolved separately in a bunch of different species in a bunch of different ways from bat wings to regular wings to even like flying squirrels who use expanded flaps of skin between their front and back legs. Flying is something we could find in another planet and should not be surprised, especially if it's relatively the same conditions on Earth. I think we'll find so many similarities. Bilateral symmetry, I think we would find in other advanced species. In other basic civilizations and other parts of the universe, we would likely find knives and spears and these basic solutions that the universe loves to reincorporate. So I wouldn't be very surprised if a greater percentage of life forms in the universe are kind of recognizable and familiar to us rather than so bizarrely different we can scarcely comprehend them physically. I think we'll see eyes. I think we'll see all sorts of things. And we will see ourselves in them and they will see themselves in us. And we will have found our larger true family. I love you guys.